You know, I have always felt that if I teach you the fundamentals of interior design, you'll be able to take that knowledge and create wonderful, well-designed rooms for yourself. So I'm going to apply that idea to color as well and give you some basic information about color theory to help you when you're selecting color for your home. Now you need to understand color space and how colors relate to each other to pull together a really great color scheme. So we're going to get started with the color wheel. Now you've probably all seen a color wheel and understand that it's the ring of colors from the spectrum of light moving from red to orange, yellow, green, blue, and then back to violet. Now the color wheel displays these colors in a continuous circle to show you how they relate to each other. Red, orange, and yellow are the warm colors and green, blue, and violet are the cooler colors. But have you ever wondered where are the rest of the colors? I mean, where's white? Where's pink, olive green, or navy? Well, you need to take a look at color space to find all the rest of the colors. This is kind of a depiction of color space. If you put all the colors that exist together in some sort of color order, it would create a three-dimensional object or almost like an egg shape. It's kind of like what you see pictured here. Every color has three dimensions to describe it. Hue, which is its color, value, which is how light or dark it is, and then chroma, which is how bright or dull the color is. Now in the center of the egg there is this axis that would be the gray scale, which goes from white at the top to black at the bottom. This dimension of color is called value and it determines how light or dark a color is. So as the colors travel up or down this axis, as you can see, they lighten at the top and darken at the bottom. A red at the top would be a pink, and at the bottom it would be a burgundy. Now the circumference of this egg shape is the dimension called hue or color. In other words, that's the color wheel, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet that travel around the circumference to create that color wheel. And the third dimension is called chroma how bright or how dull or neutral a color is. Now in color space, the colors on the outside of the egg are the very brightest colors because they're the farthest away from the gray scale in the center. And as each color gets closer to the center, it becomes less and less saturated with color and more neutral, having less chroma. Now knowing all of this, you can move on to color schemes. And as I'm sure you've experienced, certain colors work better together than with others. And designers have created color relationships to help you understand which to put together. We'll start with monochromatic. Now mono meaning one, so a single color color scheme. Now to make that interesting, you need to take a color from the color wheel and use it in a variety of different values or light and dark versions of the same color. This fabric here is a perfect example. Now, a complementary color scheme uses two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. For instance, a red and a green, or maybe blue and orange. Now, used together, this combination of warm and cool colors creates excitement and can really energize any decor. Opposite colors are perfect as accent colors in a neutral decor as well. Now we have analogous, and this is sometimes referred to as neighboring colors. Um, basically, it uses three colors next to each other on the color wheel, creating a warm or cool color space. Now, a neighboring color scheme is inviting, invigorating, especially in the warm tones, or it can be very calm and tranquil if it's done in the cooler tones. Now, one of the toughest color schemes to put together is called a triadic color scheme, and this uses three colors from the color wheel that are equally distant from each other, like red, blue and yellow. You can also do orange, green, and violet. Now to pull these off you may, may want to use um, a color with similar chroma such as the primary colors for a children's room. Now colors can also be arranged in varying degrees with one color dominant, another color as secondary, and the third as an accent. To contrast, one of the easiest and most versatile color schemes is to simply create a neutral toned room. I think this is an absolutely adorable little nursery all done in neutral. You can select a neutral like beige, taupe, or gray, or white and use it in varying values together to add some interest. Now add a lot of texture and you're going to have created a space that you can alter for the seasons or even if you want to change a mood. 
All right, now let's talk about going to the color selector and actually selecting your colors. Now that you know everything that I know about color, how do you use it? Well, you start by grabbing something from the room that you want to paint. For instance, we'll just pretend that this is the fabric that you're using on your bedspread. You now know that in a complementary color scheme of green and red, the designer that put this fabric together used a little bit more red than green in here so that it wouldn't be too busy or jarring. So we'll take this as a clue. So we're going to go to the color selector. Maybe we'll try selecting a green in a lighter or darker value than the one in the fabric so that you're kind of staying in the same color family that the designer chose. This color selector is easy to work with because all the greens are pulled together. And I can just take my fabric, move it up and down the color selector until I find something that I feel maybe picks up some of the warm green that we see here. And you know what, I'm going to stop right about in this range. I feel like things are starting to pull together. This one may be a little bright, but then pull it out, take a look at it, and see how it starts to pick up some of the colors in your fabric. What's nice about this, this is the same color family, but light to dark, so you have lots of options. Now we have red in the fabric. Let's, let's give red a try. Who knows? Come over here, and since it's a dark red in the fabric, I hold it up against the deeper reds on the rack. You know, I think I see maybe somewhere in about here, things are starting to come together. You can see you could try, try something very dark in the room or even go with something very light. Now what's nice about taking the fabric with you is that you can eliminate all the colors that don't fit into your color scheme right off the bat and the whole selection process gets much less intimidating. Now if you're still unsure, gather up some of the paint company's color cards. This makes a lot of sense. They're full of information and suggestions to really help you out. Or grab a pile of magazines and look for something that inspires you. Now, I generally rip out the pages until I get a real nice pile going, and sometimes I'm surprised at what I'm really attracted to. There's all kinds of different places that you can go. Model homes, furniture showrooms. Check out how the designers have put colors together and ask about their color choices. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to give you their names and numbers. The only way you can be completely sure is to paint up some sample boards. Check them in all different light conditions from daylight to nighttime, then make your decision. And now I'm sure with all this color knowledge, you too are a color expert.